Hi, back again with the 2013 Ford C-Max um, and just a, a battery upgrade. Um, so the OEM one is a 67R uh, group battery. So they only have 390 cold cranking amps, which is, I believe, not very, uh, not very um, large enough for this, for this vehicle. And uh, there is no AGM batteries I looked in this group, so I couldn't find one. If anyone does find one, uh, let me know. But there is another battery that's a substitute from Ford, which is the group 96R. So that's 600 cold cranking amps. And this is the mods that you have to do to get it into your car. Um, I'll be showing you in a little sec here. Uh, there is a little spacer that you can see in the battery tray uh, right at the back there. So you'll have to snip that off. I just use side cutters to remove it. And I broke it apart because I really don't care. I'm not putting it back in the vehicle. I want this larger battery to stay in the vehicle. Uh, this one is the uh, 96R group and it has 600 cold cranking amps. So it should make a big difference in the vehicle and it fits rather snug inside of here. So you'll have to remove that tray that sits right back there and it's held in place by two little rivets. And as I said, I just used side cutters to basically chew everything apart. There's, for myself anyways, I'm not gonna put it back in, so. Um, once you get the bracket removed, there's two little webbings in the front that you'll have to uh, snip off also and you'll have to cover up the holes in the back and the battery tie down with a little bit of silicone or caulking or whatever you have and just to keep uh, water and moisture out and once you complete that you can put the larger battery in place um, there's not really too much space once you put this battery in there it's not gonna roll around or flop around or hit anything um, I'm going to be building a, a battery tie down. I just didn't have time to do it in this video because wife needs the car. So it has to be on the road. And uh, maybe later on, if I have a chance, I'll, uh, I'll quickly show. I'm just going to be using those two bolts that I just pointed to. And it's going to be a one inch piece wide by quarter inch thick piece of plastic on the top just to hold down the battery. But once you put the tray on top of this, you can see that there's no space for it to go anywhere. So uh, reinstalling it, uh, do your negative pull first, and uh, and it's just a 10 mil wrench. And for the positive side, it's uh, also a 10 mil. I just use socket and ratchet that way. You're not going to be connecting the the positive with the negative while you're using your wrench. It's just a little bit safer that way. Make sure that your uh, battery terminals are nice and clean, free of corrosion. Double check your negative ground. Make sure that's free of corrosion. And then you can start reassembling everything. Um, so you'll see in a little bit me putting the battery tree, or actually the cover that goes on the back of the car, back in place. And and then rescrewing everything. Uh, the one thing that I did notice having this battery installed, uh, I've had it for about a month and a half to two months now in the car. And uh, one thing I did notice is the fact that on the in the radio, where it would tell you the radio stations, it would usually be blank sometimes. Uh, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't display any of the radio stations, even though we could listen to them and we can pick them, it would not display them. So having this battery in place we haven't had that situation happen at all and most likely that was because the other battery was already starting to uh, slowly die out and uh, lead, lead cell batteries dislike to be completely discharged and not charged uh, that'll kill the battery instantly so that's one of the reasons why these things do not last that long in this car they don't have that much of a reserve and uh, so here's the back tray put in place with uh, uh, number 30 Torx bits, uh, the battery access cover, and then the little mat. And I'll do another little video about uh, another thing to 
that's good to keep in the car, which is, uh, of course, a jack and a lug wrench. And, uh, and also, another really good thing to have in the car is a spare tire, considering these cars don't come with one. And that little kit that Ford supplies with it is not very good. So, this is definitely a better solution. And here's the part of installing a battery tender, if anybody wants to do that. So I just have the little cable coming out through the front, which you can put away after winter is complete. And you can still utilize it in the summertime too if you want, if you're not using it for a while. So here's the half inch nut on the positive terminal that you can remove and attach the positive terminal of the charger to. And then your ground goes to the factory ground, which is a 10 mil bolt right on the frame rail. And doing that one, do the same thing, take it apart, make sure it's nice and clean and put it, uh, put it with a little bit of uh, anti-seize and then tighten her up. And the install is complete for the battery tender. So that'll just help out on times where the car's not being used for a while or even on a weekend if you're not going anywhere, just put it on and that'll uh, definitely help out with the life of the battery. So hopefully this uh, video helps out and uh, people are able to upgrade their battery.